Hello, everyone, and welcome to this uh, webinar on pain relief for convoluted review cycles. We had an overwhelming response to this webinar, so thanks all for uh, joining us uh, for first in a series of uh, such webinars. Have you ever wondered what it would be like uh, to have your draft reviewed and approved in just one cycle? Are you tired of multiple emails between you and your SMEs? Does your agile team exclude the documentation team from split, sprint planning? Well, you're here to see an example of how you can use concurrent editing tools, current tools to perform concurrent editing and reviews. This is enhanced using a workflow that assigns tasks, changes document status, responds to change management requirements in regulated industries, including the need to trace all actions for full auditability. Let's do a little bit of housekeeping first. You can ask questions by going to the questions pane in uh, your GoToWebinar uh, application. And if you're joining from a mobile device, click on the little question mark to get the questions uh, dialog box to pop up. During the webinar, um, like I said, use the questions uh, questions uh, feature to send your questions to us. We'll have a moderator who's going to collate all of those and ask them at the end of uh, the webinar. If we don't have enough time, uh, we'll respond to your uh, questions by email. We'll be running a poll during the webinar as well, so please take part. It'll help us uh, fine tune our response to your questions and to our solution. At the end uh, of the entire webinar, if we do have enough time and if you feel like hanging around for a little after party, we'll open up the mics to everyone. After the webinar, you'll all receive an email with a link to the recording and you can contact us to, to schedule a, a more personalized demo. So who are we? Well, our panelists have just uh, turned on their cameras. And I'll just uh, quickly introduce myself as um, a technical, ex-technical writer. I'm now product ambassador with uh, Companize. Got over 17 years of experience as a technical writer and almost all of it in regulated industries. Valentin has 10 years of uh, talking about structured content with Companize customers and about internal agility. And John luc has 14 years of tirelessly advocating for an open and interoperable CCMS with better diffusion of knowledge. So, hello guys, thanks for joining me. Hi. Okay, so what is Componize and who is Componize? Well, we're a leading CCMS with over 14 years of providing end-to-end -end web based solution, not just for technical writing, but also for enterprise document management. Our customers come from uh, different industries, including medical devices, pharma, transportation, finance, software, and high tech. And we'll find that most of our customers actually are in regulated industries, as you see highlighted on screen. We have the experience, but we also seek to continue learning from them to continually improve our products and services. What's the theme of the webinar today? Well. From pharma to medtech to fintech, we found that while some industries have switched to DITA and other XML-based component writing, all have an issue with auditable, auditable change management processes in their source content. This leads to the aberration of having to publish a PDF to be reviewed outside of your CCMS, and then you only end up having single actor traces in the source content. Usually it's just the author that has a trace inside of the source document. For this to be auditable, the logs usually then have to be transcribed into Excel or some other tool. And then you have to archive that version of Excel with a PDF or other output in your, um, in your other system. It's a lot of faff, uh, but not a lot of gain. And above all, it's a colossal waste of time. So when Agile meets compliance, why not apply the same principles used in Agile to technical publication when it comes to the product life, life cycle? The product here is the technical publication. To be able to close an Agile sprint, all actions must be completed. 
a draft chapter is by definition not complete. If you could get a sign off on the source content in the CCMS, or if your SME could use a simplified interface to make comments and even correct the actual content, that would save time, wouldn't it? If you could get together and work in a shared environment, reviews would be quicker. Before Componize, uh, I used to set up a virtual meeting and share my screen as a workaround. It wasn't perfect. I would end up scrolling past the content that my SME wanted changed or squinting at this long three-page table to find the value that he wanted me to uh, change, wasting a lot of time. And when I found out that, as you can do in Google Docs and in Word, uh, if you're in a shared environment, you could have shared content in Oxygen or in your CCMS, I was absolutely intrigued. Compromise with its open architecture and easy integration of third-party tools blew my mind. In this webinar, we're gonna see just that, a fusion between a powerful and flexible workflow and concurrent editing in the integration of Oxygen Web Author in Compromise. This is the first in a series of webinars and in upcoming events, we'll also discuss the audit trail in regulated industries. We'll be joined then by experts in the field of data content migration, content strategy, and regulatory frameworks. So keep an eye out for that invitation. Make sure you follow me and follow Compromise on LinkedIn. Now, I'm aware that um, not all our uh, attendees today are um, technical writers, uh, so I'm just gonna uh, do a quick background on what is structured writing and why are we in, uh, what are we talking about this today? So, what is structured writing? Originally coined by Robert E. Horn uh, when he created his method of analyzing, organizing, and displaying knowledge, the principle involves identifying different common document types. Once identified, you could create a map of these information types. This map will, will assure consistency of information throughout a manual and will also help when authoring. By pushing the author to answer the question about what should go into that content, well, you, they focus more on the actual content as opposed to the form. For example, the seven most common information types that were identified by Robert E. Horn are concept, procedure, process, principle, fact, structure, and classification. So what is DITA then? Well, in technical writing, DITA further refines those seven information types into concepts, tasks, reference, and then you also have glossary and troubleshooting. A task, for example, must only contain the following information a set of steps for a person, or a set of steps for a process. Your DTD, which is a set of rules for the elements which are allowed inside of that particular topic, um, allow you to ensure that you're not entering uh, other information that should not be included in that particular topic type. As such, they encourage to put an end to all the faff and uh, concentrate on putting the actual information into the topic. The Darwin Information Typing Architecture, DITA, is an XML data model for component-based authoring and publishing. The specification defines a set of document types for authoring and organizing topic-oriented information, as well as a set of mechanisms for combining and extending and constraining document types. DITA XML was developed to maximize content reuse and single source content creation, leaving the author to focus on the content rather than the layout and also to reduce localization costs. As such, if the task was written carefully enough, it might be able to be used in many different manuals. So for example, if you take um, a car manufacturer, Peugeot, Peugeot Citroën, um, they create owner's manuals. Now, think about it. How many ways do you have to open the bonnet, or well, the hood for the Americans, uh, of your 207, 208, 308, 2008? Well, they all use the same mechanism. So why not just write the same one topic for that, and then you use it in the manual for your 207, the manual for your 208, and so on. Use it as many times as you want. Now, if there's a new way, if Pojo finds a new way to open the bonnet, all you have to do is change that topic once, and as it's shared across all the different um, 
uh, manuals, uh, it gets changed everywhere at the same time. Apply the same, the same uh, principle to risk management. You write a safety notification once and use it everywhere where the risk has been identified. If the risk changes, you update once and it'll update everywhere. So let's have a, a quick poll. I'm gonna launch the poll and uh, the question is, how many times do you have to send a document to your reviewers before it's considered ready? Answer honestly. I'll leave this open for about 30 seconds. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, about 76% of people have voted. A few more responses. Don't be shy. Okay, I'm closing the poll now. And let's share the results straight away. Wow. Now, an amazing 43% of you have to send a document for review four times and 30% three times. There's only like 3% that have to just send it once. And those people, uh, well, bravo, uh, if you're managing to get that done. Basically, the idea of concurrent uh, editing and reviews is to save time. So you join that 3% who just have to send their um, documents for review in one cycle. Okay. So collaborative review and editing. What we're aiming for is a quicker turnaround for draft content. People are constantly looking out for new ways of facilitating uh, collaborative sessions. The COVID-19 pandemic also challenged how people work with each other. With collaborative reviews and editing, you also have the feeling that you're working in the same room with your information provider. The concept that with component authoring, the antiquated, the antiquated idea of ownership for an entire document should be dead. We should be uh, having shared ownership of our documents. If we're to create content that is to be reused, especially across multiple products and projects, then you need to get rid of this idea of this manual is mine. Topics need to be written in such a way that the content can be understood outside of the context in which it is said. Concurrent editing should further reinforce that idea, and the goal is to allow SMEs and other contributors to make changes to a topic. You sh you're reinforcing the shared content ownership there. And in doing that, you're increasing the investment of your SME. Your SME does not have to learn a new tool each time that they come back to it, say your SME does it once uh, once a year, if they have to learn how to use the tool again, then well, uh, they're not gonna be too motivated to work on it. So we're decreasing the SME learning curve with concurrent, with, with our implementation of concurrent reviews and editing. The tools that we'll be looking at today will be a uh, Componize Oxygen Web Author plugin with concurrent editing active, in Componize, we'll be looking at uh, workflows, and then, well, we've got email, chat, and virtual meeting tools. So what we're going to be doing today is uh, playing a scenario for you, uh, just to show it, because we could just click around inside of a document, but it's good to have a nice little story to go with it. And the story is that uh, Dippo is a technical writer. Uh, he's well-versed and eager to put new tools uh, to, to the test. Jean-Luc, the boss, <laughs> has very little working knowledge of the actual system. Valentine, our SME, has a bit of knowledge that she is used to working, as uh, she is used to working with um, TechPub, TechPub being technical publications. And here's what we're going to review. We've got several pain points that we're going to be addressing. We, uh, I, I talked about having to send uh, multiple copies to multiple reviewers. And as you said, 40, 43% of you are doing that. You're sending multiple copies to your 
reviewers, but sometimes many of them. Then you have to collate their comments and transpose them, implement the feedback, publish a revised copy, and then send that out again, only to discover that there are new issues that were already present in the previous version. You're cycling through this process over several days as your SMEs are not always available to read content as soon as you send it to them. But then, hey, I remember that I've got Oxygen Web Author integrated into Componize and we've enabled concurrent editing. So I'm able to review this content in real time and implement the feedback at the same time with my SME. And so uh, the journey starts. First of all, let's take a look at what our workflow will be here. This is a simplified workflow that we've developed uh, just for this scenario. And Componize allows you to tailor your workflows to your environment. From regulated to unregulated industries, it's possible to have agility and compliance at the same time with no compromises. In the documentation lifecycle, the time killer is the gap between requesting a review and getting that review. Add to that the curation of logs, creating and updating a tracker, and then getting information of implementation of logs. But we can see here in uh, this cycle, the informal review cycle, we could be going through that many, many times. Now we're going to take a look at an informal review where concurrent uh, editing is active and it makes the most sense, usually doing that informal review. You save your formal review for just the stamp that everything is okay and it was as it was during the informal part of the review. Companies can build a workflow that suits your regulatory or other environment. And our workflows are able to set document status, uh, set permissions for topics included in the workflow, send notifications of review requests and of completions of reviews, archive the topics with track changes or other annotations that might be in there, automatically accept all changes uh, to archive a clean version of the document, we're able to create tags and add metadata to the topics, move the topics on to the next stage of a, re of a review process or back if it fails that particular review, uh, move the document on to an electronic signature phase prior to final approval, and also even auto-publish the content or deliver it to a platform for publication. So we're going to switch over to my desktop where i'm going to go into concurrent editing uh let's turn that off i'm on drawing mode and i'm going to go into there and in Componize, what we have is um an easy PDF creation, a quick preview that you can have of the document, of your uh, document uh, before you perform any actions on it. So you can quick, take a quick look and see that, you know, it is the document that you want to send and that it has been uh, rendered correctly. In the document actions pane, we can easily check out, open in the different uh, editors that you might have plugged in. We can start workflow and perform other um, document management um, actions, run output processing, i.e. publish it, and we can even actually take a look at any workflows that might have already been started and the version history of the particular document. I'm going to be going to start a workflow. And in here, I'm going to select the review and approve for one or more reviewers because I'm going to be, I'm going to be asking both uh, Valentin and um, Jean-Luc to review the content. I'm going to put a message in there that I've prepared earlier. Uh, so it's to please review and approve the content uh, for the 4.1 release of Compromise On Demand. Now, this is quite urgent, so I want the review to be done today, put in today's day, and I'm going to set the priority to high. Now let's select our reviewers. All I have to do is search for the name, add them and search. 
which add OK, and we can see we've got our two reviews in there. I'll skip the re required uh, percentage. In the items, I can see that that's what I want reviewed, the, the entire data map. I can also add um, additional topics in there if I feel um, that, that it's needed. And I'll make sure that I can send email notifications. The system will send that. And I'm going to start the workflow. And that's all I have to do on my end. And so now we're going to switch to Valentine's screen where she's going to start her review. <clears throat> and here I am. So being a very busy person, I will dive right in. I've got an email from from Depot. Um, I've got an email from Depot. Uh, please review and approve the new content for the one release. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, here's the document I need to review. Uh, collaborative review and editing. I'm going to open it straight away in the editor. Now I get a view that is not very useful, but I know that I can have an integrated view with all the contents. Plus, in the review pane, I will be able to go straight away to the changes. And I can see here there's a brand new section. So uh, if I have um, if I have change to make on it, I will open it in a due tab to check it out. And now starting the um, the review, I noticed that there are things missing. So um, Deepo, would you join me? Yep, yeah, not a problem. We can do that in real time. I'll correct it in at the same time as you. Can you see me in there? I uh, cannot see you yet. I cannot, cannot see your cursor yet. So. Yep, I can see yep. you here. Okay. You just blinked so. on. Um, all right. So. There's something missing for the contributor and, uh, and the collaborator, I guess. They can both um, deactivate uh, concurrent editing so um, and, and turn it on. So we might add it here um, before the checkout. They can... Um, something like that. I mean, I'm sure you can phrase it better. Yeah, let me do that straight away, and that way we can just get this done. And they can enable or disable uh, editing. Right, I'm I'm looking at the rest now. File. All right, it's not on any file, so it's on, um, I, I guess, on, on their own files, if you're okay with the change. And uh, huh. I can just, ooh, <laughs> just take that and add it to the collaborator as well. But, but here it's on any file. Does that work for you? Yeah, let's take um, a look. I've also got a problem with access to read only. Um, they don't have an access to, to read only. Um, or oh, uh, if um, uh, it's, um, it's not from the web interface, if it's if um, you receive direct link. Okay, I'll change that to if they receive, just to 
make it. Make yes, it wh whatever. Um, I'm thinking we should get uh, Jean-Luc on board for, for that as well, just to yeah. make sure that he's happy with having all this new section in this manual, because maybe it belongs somewhere else. OK. And so he should, he's in the meeting, so let's get him on Slack and... Uh... Hello, guys. Hi. Hi. What Hi. can Hi. I help you today? Um, I, will, um, I will just send you the link in, on Slack, OK? OK. Uh, and then Deepo can explain. Yeah, just let me know. I'll usually I should see you when you join, but let me know as soon as you're ready. Deep is there. Okay, okay. Jean -Luc. Oh, yeah, Jean Luc is there as well. Okay, Jean Luc, uh, just a quick um, note. Just I know this is your first time using uh, concurrent editing, but it's it's really very simple to use. Um, I mean, you use Word and Google Docs all the time. So um, if you take a look at the top, um, Valentin, just uh, quickly highlight the areas I talk about. Yeah. Um, the first three icons that you've got on there are your track changes, and that's exactly the same. It works in exactly the same way as it does in Word. So the first button turns it on and off, and then you can accept and reject. Use the next three icons to add or edit uh, comments that you add or you can delete comments if you've added them. Um, you can skip the ones in the middle. Those are your check in and check out. And then you've got your formatting uh, button. So you've got your bold in uh, italics and, uh, and uh, underline. Uh, you can add links to documents or uh, include images and things like that. And uh, you even have like, you know, your bullets and um, numbering and you can add tables and so on. So it's very simple. And if you hover your mouse over it, it gives you a very good um, tool tip. So the question was, uh, yeah, hi, are you are you happy with having that in in the new documentation? Um, do you think it's it's relevant here? And okay, so let let me take a quick look. And I, I think the, the the site manager information at the end of the document is very useful. But I would probably put it at the beginning of the document. So let me try to cut and paste it like I would do in Google Docs. Where do you want to put it? Oh, okay. Does that work? Yep. Yeah, it does. Wow. Cool. <laughs> it's easy, isn't it? <laughs> it is. And okay, the rest of the document is perfect, I think. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, Jean-Luc. OK. OK, I'll take the back to the comma there. Um, Deepo, I don't see anything else. Are you are you good? Um, I'd oh. like to, before you close it, because of the copy and paste, just, I just want to make sure that um, it's in the right, the XML is OK. Uh, can you show me all the tags, please? Um, uh, how do you do that? Uh, go to the kebab menu at the top. Right, the kebab menu. All right. Uh, yep. And select preferences. Yep. And change the first one, tags display mode, to full tags. Okay. There you go. Oh, all right. Okay, so let me take a look at that. Uh, okay, yep. It's, a, it's created a new section. That's what I wanted to check. And paragraph. Okay. Yep. We're good. I'm happy with well, that. Uh, whatever. I really prefer no tags. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. Okay. So, okay, we're good. so I'll leave the document now, and that way I'll let you check it in with all the changes. Okay. I'm out. Uh, all right. Um... So creating a new version now. So this version is archived with all our changes. I will go back to my email to confirm my approval. Jean-Luc will do that as well to be uh, to trace formally that we agree with the content. Um, yeah. 
So basically this allows both of you to approve the document. I don't have to come back to you again. All right. Well, good. I can go back to my real work now. Bye. <laughs> All right. OK, so let's come back to my screen and we'll continue. And one is two. Let me know. OK. And uh, OK, so what we've just seen here was a very, very quick informal review. And uh, basically, before you submit it to your formal review, if you do it concurrent editing, you're sure that your content will go through your formal review uh, the first time around as well. The same process with stricter rules can be applied to the formal review stage. Um, using Booleans, you can allow different people to um, sign documents if you want many people to sign it or if you want if you want to send it to many people uh, you just require one signature set that up in uh, your workflow or you can create several smaller workflows um, and each one has a stricter rule and fewer permissions and you could even set it up to clean up all the um, track changes uh, and comments and everything automatically once the review cycles are complete, the workflow can then submit the content for electronic signature, create a version or a tag. It can add metadata, create a record, i.e. archive the document. Talking about more complex workflows, here's one we set up for a client in uh, the medical device industry. Using Componize workflows, Oxygen uh, XML editor, DocuSign electronic signatures, and Fluid Topics for publication, uh, we were able to improve the way that they worked. And this was all before we even started um, with uh, the concurrent editing uh, plugin to Oxygen Web Author in Companize. In this scenario, where the company works in agile sprints and where they need quick review turnarounds, one of the sprint activities can be a concurrent review session. The doc is then always finalized for the end of each sprint. Advantages include being able to, after a couple of sprints, better identify the size of features to be included in each sprint, the number of resources that can be dedicated to a feature release, but also an ability to uh, achieve 100% completion rates for every single sprint, resulting in more accurate planning. You're better able to reduce, uh, you're, you're better able to reduce the time taken for uh, review cycles using uh, Oxygen Web Author 24 with concurrent editing. You're better able to control document status and report on content changes. At the end of a review session, all annotations can be checked into Componize CCMS. Componize Compare Versions features allows you to see a clear difference in the XML content between different versions. In case of an audit, the reason for change added to the check-in dialog box, along with a diff file, lays out very simply what changed between two different versions of a document. So what's happened? Well, I completed my review in one cycle. Valentine was happy she didn't have to read, read the same document uh, several times. And Jean-Luc was happy to deliver the documentation on time. I'll point out a little in insider's joke, the engineers were not happy because they could no longer blame TechPub for product delivery delays. We're always able to deliver on time with concurrent editing. So what's our solution to this convoluted uh, review cycle? Well, concurrent editing with our workflow engines. We produce, docu we produce um, documentation in regulated industries and we must be able to implement complex processes and still guarantee conformity with the manufacturing sites quality management systems. This is not possible with all CCMSs on the market today, where all that is proposed is document status changes. This then means using another tool to show the traceability and auditability of the product documentation. Our workflow engine is an important differentiator and one of the reasons our clients in regulated industries have opted for comp companies. It is based on leading open source uh, solution in the BPM market. It creates business-rich model processes uh, using standard BPMN notation. 
it can carry out transactions between internal and also external systems and modules so you can plug it into any other uh, quality management systems that you have you can use conditions uh, manage user tasks send notifications you can schedule jobs and apply timers to particular tasks so it's not just status management we're looking at model rich business processes using standard bbmn notation we use the leading open source solution in the BPM market. So our message to you today, well, we're working to make life easy in regulated industries. We have an open architecture with an easy integration of external tools, and we provide you with agility and compliance. We'll now take a look at uh, the questions uh, that might have come up uh, during uh, this webinar. So um, our moderator, Lionel, uh, should uh, have sent this through. I think uh, Jean-Luc uh, will be also moderating. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so we have one question. Uh, can we start a workflow on a topic that you do not own? By default, yes. Uh, you, you, you might want to start a review workflow on a topic that's not yours. Obviously, uh, Again, the workflow, the, a custom workflow might have uh, checks at the beginning if it's something that you don't want to happen. But by default, I think it's a, a valid thing to do. Uh, another question, can the persons you assign review, review to reassign to a coworker, or would do they need to come back to you? No, um, uh, there was an, uh, an assign button uh, when I opened the task to complete it and approve the content. Um, there was a little assign button and I could reassign to a coworker um, at this point or at any point where it's assigned to me. Uh, can the approval step be done with a button on the ed editing screen uh, to reduce the number of email exchanges? Also, I would assume right, that all the reviews would, could be viewed in my task. Yes, uh, my task was empty because I don't have, I didn't have any other reviews at the moment. Um, so uh, the approval step be done with a button on the editing screen to reduce them of email exchanges. I used the link in the first email to um, uh, to do the approval step. Uh, yes, it could uh, completely be done uh, uh, in, um, in the editing screen. It's not on the uh, out-of-the-box one, but it is something that would be easy to add. When adding multiple reviewers to a I workflow, is there a way to di direct reviewers to their own subset of content that needs to be reviewed by them? Jean-Luc, for example, do not, not read do not need to read the entire content. Uh, his workflow assignment do not provide direction to the like. Yes, that's an excellent question. Tipu, do you want to say something about it? Yeah, um, if you remember, um, there was a point where I could have added additional documents. Uh, you could do that and then in your uh, message to um, when you're creating the, the review workflow, um, mention that, okay, well, this particular document will take you directly to that topic. That way he doesn't have to open the entire data map. Do you, is there another way that we could do that? Yes, uh, with, a, with a custom workflow, uh, yeah. by, um, by giving each reviewer their own, um, their own subset of topics. Yeah. That's been customer. done. Yeah, yeah that's been done for totally existing uh, customers. Uh, is it a SaaS platform or on-site solution? Um, it can be either. Uh, there's a SaaS platform, and for um, when you have very um, stringent uh, security constraints, you can have an on-site solution. Um, what about validation processes of the toll itself? Um, um, of the toll. What what do you mean by toll? Uh, can you could you add an, another question to uh, qu clarify that while I go through the other questions? Do the state changes of a topic during a review get recorded in a critical dates metadata structure of the topic or the book map? Um, 
so no that the oh okay the change the state changes of the topic are going to be property changes so they're not going to be um uh, they are going to be uh to impact the critical date so the modification of the topic uh however um it is it is also saved in the audit log uh, but um for example if you see the the version history because the content itself has not changed, it doesn't create a new version. Um, is there a way to link content to external file or create cross-references between files used, for example, to create a link between risk assessment files to metadata in the AFU? Uh, um, so you could link, uh, you could add comments with links to um, uh, to the risk assessment files, provided that uh, they would be available for uh, as well to the reviewers. Uh, in in the case of a single sign-on, the the process would be quite fluid. So you mm -hmm. you you would use the comments um, to do that rather than putting it in the content itself. Yeah, and just to point out that in the new version of Companize that we're working on, um, we we are going to be like creating those links, physical links, so that um, rather than just in the comments, you're able to um, navigate between one and the other. Trying to understand if you have full validation of CSV needs in strict regulated environment and enterprise level. Um, so for the... Uh, um, CSV uh, needs. Yeah. Um, I don't understand CSV needs, um, but um, okay, so if you have yeah. full validation uh, for in a strict regulated uh, enterprise, well, um, let, let's let me get that restated. The question uh, we asked so that I understand what the CSV needs is, but um, your workflows can be set up so that um, and. Uh, status changes so that uh, once you have validated the content, um, you can no longer change it. It changes the document properties and uh, reduces permissions. So I don't know if that answers that particular question. Um, if you could restate it, and then we could always come back to you with uh, further clarification as well. So, uh, so. Um, yeah, we need, uh, maybe we uh, we could ask uh, Doron to um, to clarify because it was also the question about the toll that we didn't understand. Uh, okay. Do all the topics have to be XML? We have some maps that include Markdown files. Well. Um, we can have a mix of XML and Markdown. The um, uh, the authoring tool will have to support both uh, mm -hmm. in order to uh, in order to be able to edit both or review both. So uh, as it, as it is, uh, Auction Web Author uh, it can handle uh, Markdown and XML. Okay, well, take it offline if it becomes relevant. Um, so we've. Apart from the questions we didn't understand, sorry, um, we've uh, addressed all the questions. Does um, does everyone else have questions? We have um, uh, we have a couple minutes. Any other questions? We could even have a discussion and open the mic up if uh, there's anyone that fancies uh, having a chat. So, do we have anything, moderators? We have an, uh, no, no more questions. Okay. As, well, as, as always, yeah. uh, if you do have a question in a minute, uh, don't, uh, do not hesitate. Uh, and I think, Deepu, that's your next slide. Yep. And uh, well, basically, um, please feel free to contact us for a demo. Send an email to info at compromise.com. 
we can um, uh, arrange a personalized demo of this feature and uh, we can see what and how else companies can help. So thank you all very much for attending. It's It's been excellent. Um, you'll be receiving an email um, with a link uh, to the recording. So if you need to uh, watch it again and, um, you know, we're always here and ready to help. Just saying thanks back to everyone who's saying thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay, so well, we'll bring this to a close now. Uh, thank you all very much for attending. And see you at our next uh, webinar. Look out for that on um, LinkedIn. And we'll be getting onto Twitter as well. Bye.